One of the best discoveries I've made on YouTube in the past few months is the channel Anastasia on Tech, where Anastasia, an impressively knowledgeable hardware engineer, talks not only about Tesla, but about many other fascinating engineering and hardware topics at the bleeding edge of today's technology landscape. You definitely need to subscribe to her channel if you're not, link is in the description, so you can catch up on all the latest tech. Today, I have the privilege of speaking with Anastasia about Tesla's new Dojo chip. With her experience and insight, I expect this to be quite the journey of discovery. So without further ado, let's have a chat. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So greetings and welcome to my channel where I promise I don't know it all, especially on the hardware front. So hey, hello, it's good to see you. Hi John. Thank you so much for all your kind words. Uh, actually, I've been following your channel for a while now, and I'm very happy to be here. It's, it's my pleasure. It's great to have you here today, and I have a ton of questions, so let's jump right in. First, can you tell me a bit about your background, your education, and where you work now? All right. Um, originally, I am from Moscow, and I studied there um, computer engineering. So actually, I did both bachelor's degree and master's degree in computer engineering in the Moscow Engineering Physics University. And afterwards, I moved to Austria. And I moved here actually to pursue another master's degree in electrical engineering. To be more specific, I studied the chip design, so integrated circuits and systems design. So actually, for the last four years, I've been working in chip design uh, in one of the top uh, semiconductor companies. So actually, I have a full-time job to carry out, and my YouTube channel is just a, just a hobby, fun hobby. All right. So how did you become interested in hardware engineering? I think most people imagine doing software engineering as children. Well, you know, if they think of engineering at all as children. <laughs> Yes, actually, it is true. Uh, when I was a kid, my two favorite subjects were programming and also physics. Actually, that's why I went to study computer engineering, because I was really good in programming. But then, during my study, I studied microelectronics, and I fell in love with microelectronics. And that's why I actually found this study program, and that's why I moved about, I don't know, 2,000 kilometers away from Moscow to Austria to, to pursue this uh, career in chip design. In your videos, you seem to know a good deal about the Dojo chip just from looking at the design. Have you helped to develop any chips similar to Dojo or related in some way? Uh, yes, well, um, there was a picture of Dojo which was posted before AI Day on Twitter. I think you know it because you made a video about this. So. Just by looking at this picture, I recognized the system on wafer technology. This was like pretty much screaming. That was my main hint. Uh, in reality, yes, I do work in chip design, uh, but not in the similar chips. I'm working on building SOCs which go in cars. And uh, I have to say, it's quite different from the supercomputers in terms of complexity, power, area, but if you know the basics, if you know the concepts, the rest is pretty much the same. You can understand how other chips work if you know the basics. Wow, very cool. Well, okay, so now let's, let's talk for real. Let's get into the weeds a bit. Starting at the more abstract level, is the kind of Lego block design of the D1 chip and the training tile unique in the industry? If so, why has this not been done before? And if not, who else has done this previous to Tesla? No, it is actually not uh, unique. For instance, the very similar concept is used in Google TPU because they also have single TPU chips uh, similar to D1 chips, right? Then four of the Google TPU chips are combined in a one board. And then uh, it's like a tile, for instance, in Dodge. 
And then in the case of Google GPU, they have also about I don't know, 2000 chips combined in one pot. And what, what is in case of Dojo is Exapot. So the concepts are not really new, but the, uh, the performance which Dojo claim is, uh, is a kind of outstanding. Wow. Okay, that's a lot to chew on there. All right, thank you. Uh, so next question. What are the negatives of having so much self-sufficiency built into each chip? Is there a lot of silicon or power overhead to having the chips be able to do basically everything by themselves? Uh, very interesting question. Well, um, I don't think there is anything negative. I feel it's more like necessity because uh, if you want to scale properly, you need this modular approach. And you cannot just build a large chip uh, as a single chip because it won't work in terms of yield. Um, I mean, you can do something like Cerebras did. They have this um, wafer scale engine, uh, the chip which occupies an entire wafer. But then that's it, a wafer is a limit. So the way to, the way, the way to scale uh, right now is to have this modular approach and then scale modules. And following this approach, the bandwidth is actually the limit. And maybe there they have quite overhead, uh, but it's still arguable because they have connections both uh, horizontally and vertically. Um, to be able to connect chips in both directions uh, to enable this uh, seamless interconnect. All right, so next question. What do you think of the D1 chips having GPU, NPU, and CPU all on one chip? Is this going to make things much faster or will it end up being a waste of engineering effort to generalize each chip so much? Mm, I think I got what you mean. So why not to have a central CPU and then dedicate the rest of the uh, chips to just NPU uh, for machine learning tasks. So this is the key idea of integration everything on one um, chip, system on chip. Because in this case CPU and NPU they have access to the same shared memory. And in this way you reduce latency uh, dramatically. Otherwise, if you don't have this integration, you would need to uh, compute some data, then uh, encode, send, decode, uh, store, uh, then, so it takes hell amount of time. So integration in SOC saves all this time. Basically, they, what they did, they built a largest SOC they could to still achieve good yield and then just scale in amount of used SOCs. All right, uh, well, next question, this is sort of related, but how about the cooling and 3D networking? Can you describe a bit more how this works and why Dojo simply won't use a 2D plane for power and connectivity? All right, so their uh, 3D power delivery and cooling is really interesting. So what they did, they packed 25 D1 chips in a special package which I guess is uh, integrated uh, for now system and wafer technology. So, and because these 25 chips are on the wafer, it allows very fast chip to chip communication. So you cannot achieve such speeds, um, such a fast chip to chip communication without integrating in chips on wafer. And then then surrounded this wafer with um, fast bandwidth IOS interconnect. I, it's really impressively fast. I think it's about 10 terabytes per second. It's super fast. So this was the first reason for using this package. And this power delivery and cooling is kind of additional benefits. So about the power, uh, the area of the tile is pretty large and the, all of this area is basically dedicated to compute. So you want to distribute power equally so evenly all over this tile. Routing power from all the directions won't allow this 100% utilization for compute. And also power delivery won't be equal to all the points. It's kind of a natural choice. Uh, it's, it's also another benefit that they decided to use the system and wafer technology which delivers power um, vertically. This is similar to the Chiplets, you know, when uh, one layer of uh, chips is covered by another and power is delivered from one chip layer to another chip layer also vertically. 
And once power delivery is solved, the last in the biggest problem is uh, heat because this chip dissipates lots of heat, like uh, 15 kilowatts. I think it's it's like it's a lot. It's like charging Tesla at home. Uh, so Tesla chosen to use this integrated uh, fan out system on wafer technology, which also offers a solution to this because it has a heat sink and water cooling system integrated in the package, which allows to cool down the chip. All right, next question. What is more important in your opinion, the raw processing power or the flops of the chip or the bandwidth, or in other words, the terabytes per second? And why is this the case? <laughs> this is a very good question. So if you have a single chip, then definitely flops. Um, if you have a system to scale, uh, then both. Still, flops are more significant, but bandwidth um, becomes a bottleneck. So you have to find a trade-off and uh, to optimize both to, to build the most efficient system. All right, interesting. So next question, what was the moment in the dojo portion of AI Day that really blew your mind or made you say, wait, they can do what? <laughs> um, I think um, that they claim to achieve one exaflops because regarding the package, I've already knew that I, I, before, because this picture was uh, leaked before, but this performance uh, is really uh, it's really a lot in this supercomputer world. I mean, the traditional high performance computers like Fugaku, they still like in, can achieve only half of this performance but it's different precision, so you cannot compare it. But still, when someone says one exaflops, you mean it's like a powerful chip. But we still need to remember that it is just theoretically calculated value, and we need to wait until Tesla can prove it with tests, right? <laughs> wow, that's really amazing. All right, so next question, and this is related to something that I've speculated on before. Given how Tesla never mentioned who was building the Dojo chip, might they be manufacturing it themselves? Is this even possible given how complex and expensive chip fabs are? And if it is possible, do you think Tesla is already building these chips themselves or are they building something now to build the chips in the future? Well, very interesting point. Um, no, I actually don't think so because building up a fab costs lots of money, like tens billions of uh, dollars and you need to bring up the fabrication. You need experience in that, you need people, you need in another, so next year you will need another 10 billions to buy new equipment for the new smaller technology. So it takes a lot of resources. And I feel like for Tesla it's not the right uh, focus, you know, because they are already well-established fabs uh, like Samsung and TSMC, Taiwan Fab, which focus on this and they can just flawlessly fabricate chips for Tesla. I think Tesla should focus on their strong sides like solving autonomous driving and real-world AI and let Samsung and TSMC fabricate chips for them. So it doesn't worth their attention and resources. And yes, you're actually right. They never officially mentioned who fabricated Dodge. Um, I think uh, for me, it's pretty clear because this, I was reading a paper about this integrated fan out uh, system of wafer technology, which was published on IEEE by TSMC. So it's kind of, you know, you can easily guess. All right, we'll definitely have to keep an eye out for all of this and see how you do in your prediction category here. Uh, next question, one other thing that's been a big buzz around the internet and which I've tried to answer myself is how on earth Tesla plans to fit the massive neural network models they'll be training on Dojo into the small portable chips in their cars. Hardware 3 is now a few years old and obviously Tesla has to make sacrifices to put their models on the current cars. But what about hardware 4? Tesla had plans for TSMC to manufacture hardware 4, but they've been on hold for about a year now. Do you think that Tesla now is actually planning to use a modified D1 chip for hardware 4? If so, how will they get all that power into a portable form factor that doesn't use all the car's batteries just to run the software? Very good question, uh, because I hear these uh, similar discussions a lot. Um, so, no, because um, FSD chip is an automotive SOC and basically it's 
controls the car. It makes a decision how to drive the car. While Dojo, on the other hand, is a is a large matrix multiplication processor which has completely different application and it doesn't know how to drive the car. So basically, it's a different leaks. But anyway, I expect that maybe uh, NPU units in the next uh, hardware for chip will be more aligned with those which are now in Dojo. This would make sense. And regarding hardware 4, I'm also waiting for it a lot. Uh, in my opinion, it will be more evolutionary step rather than revolutionary. So they will uh, for sure tape out the next FSD chip in new, tinier technology node. This will also help to, to, to drop the power consumption. I think they may add another GPU and they will improve, they will try to improve NPUs, maybe possibly add two more NPUs to have in total four neural processing units. And I'm sure they will try to keep at least the same power consumption or even reduce it. Hmm. All right, really interesting. And my final question, when it comes online, if and when it comes online, will Dojo live up to the hype surrounding it? Um, yeah, I, th I think it's, there are still a lot of issues for Tesla to solve with Dojo. For me, it feels like more a research work, a research project rather than development, rather than productive chip. And you know, in research, there are a lot of uncertainties so you never know if your device will fly, <laughs> but I really, really hope that Dojo will fly and that they can prove uh, one exaflops with uh, their tests in future. So I really, really hope so. All right. Well, this is a lot of stuff to chew on. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate everything you, you helped us with today. Your insights, your experience, your wisdom, and your predictions too. Um, thank you so much, John, for having me here today. I'm really, it was really fun. And thank you for interesting questions. So this is one of those episodes that we should all bookmark and we can come back and check in a couple of years and see how you did. I expect that you're going to do great because it seems like you know everything about this space. So fantastic job. And thank you again so much for being with us today. I really do appreciate. I really hope that we can make more uh, videos together in future. And I'm looking forward to your future videos. Thank you a lot. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later. To everybody else out there, have a good day and I'll talk to you later as well. Bye-bye.